do makes us very acidic. In this country, uh, what I've been reading is that we are approximately arachidonic acid to omega-3, anywhere from 20 to 40 on the top to about 1 on the bottom. That is very unhealthy. And you guys read the recent Time, article, Time magazine article on uh, health care in, in America? We're at the bottom of the developed countries. What's going on? So we want to go into shifting from the negative to the positive. The net, net systemic load of acid accounted for by the displacement of high bicarbonate yielding plant foods and the ancestral diet replaced by cereal grains. All right? It's a lot easier to eat cereal, isn't it? We all want to eat vegetables, but what? You've got to cook them. <coughs> they don't taste as good as cereal. You don't get a sugar rush from them. But what do you get? You get that nice balance. You get a nice uh, alkaline sensation in the body. Um, and we, we feel better when we're alkaline. We really just feel better. How hard is it to add a salad to you know, some fish or a steak or whatever you're eating? It's not too difficult. How hard is it not to have bread at the table? Big trick at the restaurants, they make you wait. Then they bring on the bread, right? I could eat two loaves. I'm so hungry with them, with them waiting all the time. Where's my waiter? You know. Well, they do it for a reason. Then they ask, what do you want to drink? Well, I need some beer because you know, I need a rush. What does that do to you? It sets you up for failure. What do I do before I go to eat? I eat. <laughs> I do. I'll have half an avocado. I'll have some nuts. I don't fill myself up totally, but my wife has seen me um, you know, take mostly everything home. I still have a good time at dinner. You don't have to do, be as dramatic as I am. But um, don't let yourself get hungry, ever. Do not ever let yourself get hungry. Carry food with you. Put in your briefcase, put in your desk drawer. Any people who have been in my office have seen my entire back behind my desk on the credenzas filled with food. I will not allow myself to get hungry. Do you know why? Because I'm just like you. If I'm hungry, I'm going to splurge. I'm going to kill to feel better. So, you know, the whole idea is eat, eat, eat. Do a little bit all day long, snack. And some people say, don't do all that much snacking because you want to at least get the insulin way down. But I'm just finding to be practical. And you have to be practical with yourself. You're not going to be who I am. I'm not going to be who you are. We're all different. And you have some things that I can't do, and I have some things you can't do. It's just the way we all are. I'm better at some things that I've worked on. You're better at other things. Um, but try to keep food around you. But try to make your little snacks things that are good for you. You know, if you like avocados, that's a e real easy thing to do. Nuts are simple. You can keep them in your pocket. This is very, very interesting. It shows the Paleolithic <coughs> versus the modern nutrition. The Paleolithic is in the dark, and the modern is in the light. So we have uh, kilocalories of protein. Paleolithic, huge, right, compared to what we eat? Why don't we get the protein? Because we're grabbing all the grain and sugar. We want to rush. What about this? Sucrose, Paleolithic, oh, nothing. How about us? We want the rush. Fiber, Paleolithic. Woo, nice, huh? What do we get? Nothing. Processed food doesn't have any fiber in it. So these are the ratios I was talking about. Rachidonic acid, 25 to 1. All right? There is a blood spot test that we can do in the office. We just prick the finger. We can take a little blood, put it on a cardboard, send it in. We can actually tell you what your ratio is, show you how much more you're going to need. You can balance it either way. You can either do more omega-3, you know, more fish oil, things of that nature, or you can do less things like red meat that's grass, that, that is not grass-fed. More red meat that is grass-fed will help you bring this down. More red meat that is grain-fed, so you get organic. Does that mean anything? Not really. You can have organic corn that it's being fed or grain, and you're going to get high inflammation in your body because you're getting whatever it is that you're eating, whatever it ate. I love this one. No bagel trees. <laughs> Bagels? That's probably the worst thing you can eat. But they're great. 
I like bagel nosh myself. So protein, what does it do? Increases basal metabolic rate. That's when you're just sitting still not doing anything, how many calories you're burning. Now it's also when you're not when you are moving, it's also when you are moving that you're going to get an increase in your metabolism from protein. Satiety, that means you know, being satisfied. So your appetite's not bugging you and you've got enough of a load going so that you can carry yourself for the rest of the day. So we need proteins to rebuild our structure. We're breaking down constantly. We need to keep rebuilding constantly. We're in a catabolic state, especially as we get older. When we're young, we're anabolic. You know, they call the anabolic steroids that weightlifters use, testosterone, growth hormone, builds us up. Well, what happens when we get past the age of 30 to our hormones? Whoosh, down. We don't usually notice it too much until we're in our 40s. By our 50s, we're very well aware of it. By our 60s, what happens to penises? Right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, I'm a friendly guy. I can talk like that. And so can you when you're here, when we, when we talk about life and ourselves. Do not be shy about what you say, because we're all in this boat together. We're all paddling up the stream together. But we have ways with big paddles where it's motorized that it makes it easy. All right? So... We need to keep the hormones going, and we get that from proteins. Some tips. You know, as much as you can do organic is great. Some of you don't want to do that. It's a pain to go to a health food store. Um, it's the best that you can get if you can afford it. So we get from proteins, sustain reduction appetite. I looked up this word, ad libitum. That's like the babies that cry and you feed them. You, know, you breastfeed them all the time. It just means free feeding. You want, you want animals, you, if you're going to eat an animal, you want one that's free feeding. So caloric intake, very important because a lot of people eat the right foods, but they're bingers and they're going to eat way too much of it. Not too many of us, but some of us do that. These, uh, the leptins and the ghrelins, you've probably been reading about them somewhat, they deal in the brain with appetite suppression and satiety and things like that. So, can we live without carbs? I don't think so. I've never done well, you know, when I've just done my steak thing for a while. I start losing a little energy. Got to add some carbs in. Veggies are great carbs. So we're designed to be fat stores so we can survive famines. I talked about that with diabetes. You know, was it genetically selected? We have a lot of people born with diabetes. Nature kept them around. They didn't get rid of them. Why is that gene still around? It worked. We also need a lot of carbs just for the brain. And uh, glucose is the primary fuel for the brain. Now, when we do injections in the office, some people pass out. People that don't have breakfast pass out. Why? There's not a lot of glucose in the brain. What do we give them? We give them a little can of soda with sugar in it. And they go, I don't drink sugar. You know, because we get all the people that are pretty cleaned up already. And I go, you're going to drink it now because you're not going to pass out on me. <laughs> so, yeah, we need glucose in the brain. There's no question about it. But it's the right amount. We don't want it jumping in the blood. We want a nice, constant, low level. Exercise, how important is it? I get this every day in my clinic because I deal with a lot of pain. I gain weight because I can exercise because my arm hurts. <laughs> don't lie to yourself like that. It's what this exercise is. How much are you chewing up? Be careful what comes in here because you can be as trim as you want and as healthy as you want without ever exercising. Don't let that be a reason where you go, I don't have to watch my food, I can't exercise, so therefore it's okay to be overweight. It's not true. All you got to do is watch your mouth. You know, we're finding by keeping the mouth closed, we save marriages and we save health. <laughs> right? It's the biggest key, keep your mouth closed. But at the same time, if we exercise, we raise our adrenaline up, right? It's a stress hormone. We need it to fire up. At the same time, when adrenaline goes up, it forces insulin down, okay? We want that insulin to go down, so exercise is a great thing. When your insulin is down, remember, you're going to burn fat. It opens up the fat molecules to be released as free fatty acids, 